This video is sponsored by Incogni. Let's take a look at the first map of the entire navigable African continent, meaning it's not connected to a large southern landmass, commonly known as Terra Australis. It's of course not the first map to show any part of Africa, and there were some earlier maps to show the navigable continent, but this is the first dedicated just to the continent since Bartolomeu Diaz rounded its southern tip in 1488. This map was created by German cartographer Sebastian Munster and published in 1554, but more about the author later. In southern Africa, we have an elephant. In the tropical regions, birds are depicted, though the species isn't clear. The coloration was not uniform from map to map, but maybe it wasn't meant to represent one species anyway. A little bit further north is what is today Cameroon and Nigeria. There is a one-eyed man to represent the fabled tribe of the Monaculi. There is vegetation shown in the middle of the Sahara Desert. The map was partly based upon the work of Ptolemy, the second century Roman mathematician, astronomer, and geographer. This included the cities, so some had become abandoned by this map's time, such as Cyrene, an ancient Greek and later Roman city in present-day Libya, and Meroe, an ancient city in modern-day Sudan, and was the capital of the Kingdom of Kush for several centuries. Of course, many of these cities are still around today. Alexandria, Syene, which is now known as Aswan, and across the Red Sea, which is literally colored red on this map, is Jerusalem and Medina. Now maybe it wasn't entirely true to say the entire continent of Africa is on this map, because Madagascar is missing, even though it was already on older European maps. Before I move on to what I think are the most interesting features on this map, I want to share with you today's sponsor, Incogni. Incogni removes your data from databases that collect, trade, sell, or publish it. What happens is your internet activity, like purchasing something from an online shop, signing up for a website, or downloading an app, and the information you put in about yourself is sold to a data broker, who then sells it to other companies that want to market to you. That's why you get spam calls, emails, and really creepy ads that feel like your computer is listening to your conversations. Data brokers often do this without your informed consent, but these brokers, by law, have to delete your data if you ask. Though opting out is possible, it's difficult by design. If you were to contact one broker at a time, it could take 66 years to finalize your data inquiry requests. But Incogni can do this for you, so you can regain control over your personal data. Within a month, most data brokers will have removed your data and Incogni regularly repeats the process to make sure the data brokers do not add your data again. The first 100 people to use the code GEOGEEK using my link in the description will get 60% off Incogni. On the map are major rivers known to Europeans, which of course includes the Nile, but it speculates on its source. A few unnamed lakes are shown. These two lakes were also taken from Ptolemy. They would later take the names Lake Zaire and Lake Zaphlon. Ptolemy cited the tales of a Greek merchant named Diogenes, as well as other travelers who journeyed inland from the coast of East Africa, who claimed to have seen two great lakes and snowy mountains that fed the Nile River. These snowy mountains would become known as the Mountains of the Moon. These mountains may go back even further, to Herodotus, a Greek historian and geographer who traveled to Egypt in the 5th century BC, who wrote in his book, The Histories, about the theories of the time on the source of the Nile River. A local told Herodotus, between Syene, a city of the Thebaeus, and Elephantine, there are two hills with sharp conical tops. The name of one is Crophi, and the other, Mophi. Midway between them are the fountains of the Nile, fountains which it is impossible to fathom. Half the water runs northward into Egypt, half to the south towards Ethiopia. However, Herodotus was hesitant to take the man at his word, and noted that he could not find a second person with the same claim. Some Greeks also apparently held a theory that the Nile River's source was melting snow. Herodotus replied to this theory in his book that he believed that it is absolutely impossible. The area hadn't been explored by Greeks, but he argued with what information he had on the region. His reasoning was that wind blows hot from the southern region. Birds migrated to the region in the winter, 
and people that live in the region have dark skin because of the heat. But it didn't really matter. 2,000 years later, the Snowy Mountains were still thought to exist by many. This map is from 1836. Lake Zaire continued on maps for quite some time as well, and its story grew more interesting. It was soon shown further west, and as the source of multiple rivers, and a rumor spread in Europe that the lake held mermaids. It turned out that Lake Zaire didn't actually exist, at least in its final form. It may have originally supposed to have been what we call Lake Victoria, or Lake Albert to its northwest. Lake Zaire began to disappear on maps beginning with this map by a French cartographer in 1700. But the river Zaire is real. Today, it's called the Congo River. And this is the river that mermaids were allegedly seen by a local queen which led to the belief that Lake Zaire was home to mermaids. Many African kingdoms are noted, including that of the legendary Prester John, a Christian king who was said to be a descendant of one of the three kings of the Bible, and ruled over a vast empire from the 12th to the 17th centuries. According to a forged letter that circulated around Europe in 1165, it was full of riches, had no snakes, no poisonous plants, or even noisy frogs. It was described as basically being heaven on earth. It was even supposedly the home of the Tower of Babel and the Fountain of Youth. In the letter, Prester John declared that he was a devout Christian, and protects the Christians of his empire, as well as would wage war against and chastise the enemies of the cross and Christ. It was originally believed that he was from the Far East, and as the word in Europe spread about the growing Mongol Empire, it became the leading theory that this was his kingdom. But as it became clear that the Mongols were not Christians, and their empire began to collapse, the location of Prester John's empire changed to Ethiopia, who had been converted to Christianity in the 4th century. In the bottom left of the map is a cartouche, which details sailing directions from Lusitania, which was an ancient Iberian Roman province located where modern-day Portugal and a portion of western Spain lie, to Calcutta. To the right is a Portuguese ship in the Gulf of Guinea, which is a general representation of trade and navigation. It's difficult to date when exactly this map was first printed. Variations of it were published in Munster's Geographia, published from 1540 to 1552, and Cosmographia from 1544 to 1628. These books sold well. Both were printed in multiple languages and editions. Cosmographia was one of the most successful works of the 16th century. These books made Munster the first mapmaker to show each of the four known continents on their own dedicated map. Because of these books, Munster could be credited with solidifying the use of the name America. Fellow German cartographer Martin Waltzemuller first used the name America on his 1507 world map, but Munster's work was seen across Europe. Sebastian Munster was born in 1488 and died in 1552 of the plague. He was both a cosmographer and a professor of Hebrew. Through this position, he was able to put himself at the center of a large network of scholars from whom he obtained geographic descriptions and maps for his own. Munster published his first known map, a map of Germany, in 1525, before publishing the books and maps he is best known for. Munster laid the foundation for other cartographic works of the 16th century, which would include the first atlas ever published, and remnants of his work would be found on maps, including of Africa, for years to come. And that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube members for supporting the channel, and thank you all for watching. And don't forget, if you want to check out Incogni, there's a link in the description below.